and welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today what I would like to do is to look at the differences between motors and generators. And in doing so, I'm going to look at three different things. The first thing, I'm going to give you the basic overview of how this demonstration motor works. I'm then going to show you also how this motor can be used as a generator. And finally, I'm going to look at briefly what are the differences in terms of how they function. But before we begin, we need to have a look at the parts of this apparatus so that we understand the principles behind both the motor and the generator. So let's look at the basic features of my motor. The first and obvious thing is this large magnet. And this magnet here obviously has a north pole and a south pole, which means if I just remove the top here, it means we have magnetic field lines going from the north to the south. In, in terms from your perspective, they're going from left to right. We have a rotating set of coils here. And these rotating set of coils, we often refer to this as the rotor. The external um, stationary part is called the stator. This allows my coil of wire to rotate freely within the confines of my magnetic field. You'll also notice these metal plates. Now an iron core strengthens the magnetic field lines passing through the wires. However, the fact is that rotating this iron core within the magnetic field, it will generate what we call eddy currents. They're actually going to uh, cause energy to be generated uh, in terms of heat which lowers the efficiency of the motor. And so what we have here is lamination, which reduces the eddy currents. If you want to know a little bit more about that, I have a video on transformers where I discuss a little bit more about eddy currents and lamination. And then over here, we have what we call a commutator. And a commutator either allows current to switch direction or allows current to continue in the same direction, depending on how it is connected to these things called brushes. Now in this position, you'll notice that this brush over here will either allow connection to this device in the direction into the device, which means it's going to act like a motor, and we're going to make this turn by inputting an electrical current. Or if in terms of a generator, if I manually spin it, then the current will be leaving the device via this brush over here, and we're going to connect that to the light bulb. In this position, you'll notice that there is a split right there. And if I move this out of the road, you can see it more carefully like so. What that means is that if I leave it in this position, it is now referred to as a slip ring commutator. This brush is always connected to this part of the commutator, this brush below is always connected to this part, which ensures that the current going in, if in terms of a motor, or the current going out in terms of the motor, is always coming from one side of the motor. So maybe this side, and this one over this side. But if I place it now, if I place now the brushes to the middle position, what that means is that every 180 degrees, my commutator causes the current to switch directions, whether it is going in in terms of a motor or where it's going out in the other direction for a generator. We now refer to this as a split ring commutator. So now we've got the basics of our motor and, we, and the basics of a generator. So now let's look at the functions of that. So now what I've done is I've connected a power supply to my device here and it's now going to act like a motor. We're going to have a current going into the device and what is going to happen is I am going to cause an electrical wire carrying a current to move in the confines of a magnetic field. And what's going to happen here is, is that that wire will experience a force and that is of course basically what we refer to as the motor effect. So what's happening? So let's have a closer look. In this case, what I've done is I've set it up as a DC motor. 
and I'm using this now as a split ring commutator. That means if it's in this position, like so, so you'll notice that my wires are now parallel to the magnetic field. What we get is that the current is going in one side and then going out the other side. And of course, these two sides are going to experience a force. In fact, it's going to generate a torque. And as it starts to turn, we want to keep that torque fairly constant. And that is only achieved really by my wires being still parallel with the magnetic field. And hence these magnets are curved so that we have maximum torque. We have basically the force always at right angles to the radius of the rotation. But what's important is that at this junction right there, when the coil is at 90 degrees to the magnetic field, what we end up getting here is my split ring commutator is now set at the split. The current changes direction. And why is that important? Well, assuming that the current is going in on the red side and out on the other side, if we keep going around like so, and we keep going through this, now this would now be going towards you, and this would be coming towards me, because of simply we've re-rotated at 180 degrees. And that's not helpful because that really means the motor is going to start to turn in the other direction. We need the current to swap directions at this junction right here. And that is the function of the split ring commutator. So what happens is that the current is always going in on the red side and out on the other side. And every 180 degrees that switches so that this continues to turn. But it's important to understand that the split, the swapping over, happens at this position when actually you have no torque anyway because the magnetic field lines are going horizontal. My wire, of course, is going towards me. That means my force is going up and that means no torque because my force needs to be at right angles to the turn. So that, in essence, is a DC motor. If I want to make this an AC motor, I need to do two things. The first thing I need to do is I need to make this into a slip ring commutator and I do it like so. Now, if I turn this on with my power supply to the DC setting, it is just going to go backwards and forwards because I have a problem. The fact is, is that it's not going to switch directions and so it's going to be forced the other way. But I have another way of switching the directions and that is I'm going to change my power supply to the AC power supply. So what I now have is I have my current switching directions due to the fact that I've got an alternating current. And if I turn this on, and we need to put this back on there to make sure we've got strong magnetic fields, I should be able to make this turn. But the most important thing is, is that this has to turn at the rate of the frequency of my alternating supply. Now that's 50 hertz here in Australia, 60 hertz in the USA. And so if I get it to spin, I should be able to make it spin at, um, at 50 hertz. Now, this particular motor is not particularly good for that. I have other motors uh, at work that will maybe do a better job, but generally speaking, let's see if we can get it going. Well, that was a bit of a fail, but that's okay. It, if it spins, it should spin at 50 hertz. And that's the key thing about an alternating motor or an AC motor. It will turn at the frequency of the alternating supply, and we often refer to this as a synchronous motor. So now let's convert this to a generator. You'll see now I have actually done a couple of things. I've removed my wires and I've inserted a light bulb here. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to generate an EMF by way of Faraday's law. But the actual structure of the device is still the same. We still have a split ring commutator or a slip ring commutator, depending on how I've set it. We still have a rotating coil within the confines of a magnet. And now you'll notice I've got this flywheel here, which allows me to turn. So I'm clearly generating an electrical current or an EMF, which causes a current to flow. Why is that the case? Well, again, the principle here now is I am not actually putting a current into the wire. I'm causing my wires to move within the confines of a magnetic field. 
More correctly, what I'm actually doing is, is my, my coils of wire are experiencing a rapid change of flux. And that's the rate of change of flux that generates an EMF. And that's Faraday's law. And so if I start turning this in my magnetic field, my wires are experiencing a change in flux. The faster I do it, the more rapid the change of flux, and therefore I'll be generating current. I can't. And again, I need to put this on there to make sure my magnetic field is nice and strong, and I can create a current. But what about the DC commutator? Well, in this situation, because I'm switching my wire around 360 degrees, the EMF is going to go backwards and forwards. It's going to be an alternating EMF. And I have a video that discusses this, and just look up my flux video. So what this commutator does in the split ring commutator is that every 180 degrees, it converts it. So in other words, my DC supply won't be, my DC output won't be your classic sinusoidal wave, but every negative sinusoidal component will be flipped over. So in this situation, I'm actually creating a DC voltage and hence a DC current. If I change my commutator to be a slip ring commutator, then now what's going to be happening is, is that that alternating current due to the alternating EMF is going to continue to go to my bulb. So now my bulb is blinking simply again because of the alternating current, but it is an alternating supply applied to it. So there are the basics of a motor and a generator. One relies on the motor effect and one relies on Faraday's law. So what are the key functional differences between a motor and a generator, considering that the structural features are practically identical? Well, the obvious one is, is the conversion of energy. With a motor, we input an electrical energy and we achieve mechanical energy or kinetic energy as it starts to rotate. In terms of a generator, it's the reverse. We input mechanical energy and we achieve electrical energy at the other side. And so there are the basic differences between a motor and a generator in terms of function. So there you have it, how a motor works, how a generator works, and their differences between the two. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, share and subscribe. And if you really value, find this video useful, consider supporting my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.